briefing titled EDI Mapping. I'm John Matera. We thank our hosts at BAST this afternoon. Uh, we'll be covering what document mapping means and why it's important to activating trading relationships. You can use the question box in uh, GoToWebinar as we go along and we'll do our best to answer anything during the five minutes we've allocated at the end. Uh, there's no need to take notes. Uh, BAST will email you a link to the recording of the session. EDI, Electronic Data Interchange, is used in many industries to automate commerce. This includes both buying and selling, as well as transfer of documents in things like medical and insurance businesses. Today we're using only examples of goods being sold by a supplier to customers. Implementing trading relationships is similar across any industry, but documents and fields can differ. Grocery purchase orders are completely different EDI documents from those used to buy other items, for example. Lot tracking and serialization may be critical for some businesses and not important at all to others. It's helpful for the person doing the implementation to be familiar with the industry requirements. The basic idea of EDI is elementary. Enable automated commerce by connecting electronic versions of ordinary business documents from the buyer systems to the supplier's ERP system. EDI mapping refers more specifically to the setup of each required field in each document so that they correspond correctly on both sides of the transaction. So let's look at an example of two purchase orders being received from different customers. Let's also pretend that Target still has stores in Canada or that you're trading with Target in the U.S. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> uh, these impossibly small font panels happen to be real EDI documents from Walmart and Target for similar goods. The information in these documents must be placed in the correct fields in the supplier's ERP sales order so that the order can be accepted and fulfilled. Although these POs are for, uh, for similar goods, notice that there's no similarity in where the data is found within the EDI document. In addition, there's information that the buyer wants in all their documents that the seller does not need full fulfillment. Somehow that information has to be persisted. Although EDI is a, referred to as a standard, you can see that uh, you know, retailers exhibit wonderful creativity uh, in defining their own specifications. So uniqueness is really the crux of why mapping is required for each and every EDI document that's used in every trading relationship. Having pre-done maps is a plus, but there are no completely plug-and-play maps. Uh, we'll talk in a moment about what it means when you hear EDI vendors say they have uh, universal maps. Retailers are also notorious for changing specifications, Amazon in particular, as their own business needs evolve. You hear lots of news about omni-channel sales, such as brick-and-mortar retailers using stores as e-commerce distribution centers, or e-commerce websites implementing new third-party logistics. Every time you hear something like that, think new EDI maps and revisions to old ones. Mapping, unfortunately, is never once and done. It requires vigilance and maintenance. So in real life, mapping can happen in one or more of several places. First, on the trading partner side of the map, uh, that has to be set up to accommodate all the fields a particular retailer uses. Typically, that side of the map is done by the EDI software vendor or service provider. That canonical or one size definition is the superset of all the fields that the EDI refer, vendors refer to as the this universal map. that would be great if that were all there were to it. But of course there's two sides to the map and connecting the other end to ERP is really what mapping and integration are all about for you. That's where the complexities occur. So to switch visual metaphors here 
mapping is complicated to do, needs to be done by people, and must be maintained. Here's an example of two orders received by the same supplier for the same items again, one from Walmart, one from Target. You would expect item numbers to be different, and uh, but look at the quantities. They're, the supplier is going to ship 12, but one ordered one, a case of 12, and one ordered three, four packs. Um, uh, here the Walmart order is to be sent to a distribution center as a replenishment order. That kind of order item number might imply the ship to address. So that logic has to be incorporated somewhere. The ERP system may not even have fields associated with SKU, buyer ID, or mark for. Uh, those are things that the, the, the customer wants on POs and invoices, but really don't mean anything to the supplier. So some ERPs don't have fields for those things. And yet to be compliant, those fields have to be stored and reattached to the documents when they're sent back the other direction. Now this is a very limited example, but imagine how complicated it can be to map documents correctly. Then you multiply that by dozens of trading partners with four or five documents each, and that's a lot of mapping. Here are the orders, again, we talked about before. The data in the blue highlighted fields is that store and forward stuff that must be kept somewhere, either in or outside the ERP, and then retransmitted for sub, uh, subsequent documents. Uh, that store and forward is something you really have to figure out based on the capabilities of your own ERP system and other programming that you might have to do. So let's raise the definition of uh, mapping to include any and all functions needed to get the job done rather than a particular component. For EDI ERP integration to work, all of the mapping factors have to be dealt with through some combination of EDI application software, mapping software modules, uh, tables in the ERP, uh, or custom programming. Since handling special logic, like we've been talking about, comes up so often, standardized capabilities to do that while keeping version-to-version -version ERP compatibility are always the best. But, you know, someone has to be responsible for uh, implementing and maintaining the maps. They're just not robotic. So this is why mapping is such a big deal in your EDI implementations. The ability to execute on mapping is often the make or break factor in EDI success. Uh, the ability to do custom mapping at reasonable cost is consequently often a key decision criterion uh, when suppliers choose uh, EDI solutions. So what's really required of the party responsible for the mapping? Well, expertise in the particular ERP system that the supplier uses is essential. Uh, thorough knowledge of EDI is an increasingly rare commodity, but it's a clear requirement. Time, the actual time and money must be set aside for doing the work. You have to allocate the resources that you need. It's really helpful to have existing relationships, person-to-person -person relationships with the trading partners not only to understand the nuance, but also because it helps you know that, you know, an actual human being by name when you're trying to get something done on the retailer side. There are things like testing that have to be accomplished where having a, an interaction with a person on the other end of the telephone might be the best way to get something done. Uh, above all, diligence is required, attention to detail, during the setup, and then constant vigilance thereafter. Now, not all mid-sized companies have the wherewithal to do this in-house. It gets more difficult 
all the time based on changes in business to business and business to consumer omni-channel commerce. So plan carefully if you're uh, just getting into EDI, if you're expanding your EDI uh, outside of say, you know, you've been using web forms and now you want to go to integrated EDI, uh, or if you're currently using software and you need to expand your business, um, think through these, these requirements before you decide which way to go. So the, the, the summary really is this. EDI mapping is the essence of what uh, trading partner activation is all about. Activation and, and ongoing maintenance. Most, for most people that means don't try this at home uh, as they say on the funny videos. Uh, it's complicated, uh, it's customized, it's critical, it's the lifeblood of the business, it's the order to cash cycle after all, uh, and it changes all the time. So uh, again, think carefully about how you want to do this in your business and ask experts uh, uh, if you don't have the ability to do it uh, in-house. Okay, we actually finished up uh, two minutes early. Uh, uh, the, the folks at Bass, uh, Fareshta, have there been any questions entered on the uh, on the go to meeting? Okay, I'm checking. I don't see any uh, questions in the chat box. Uh, give a moment for uh, folks to enter any if you have them. Okay, we'll wait uh, for just one moment, but uh, you can visit our website, redtailsolutions.com, if you'd like more information about these topics, you can email us, info at redtailsolutions.com, and you will be getting a, an email from the nice folks at Bass with a recording of this session uh, if you'd like to go through the slides again. Great. Thank you very much for attending, and good luck to you and your businesses. Thanks.